In this presentation, we're going to record transactions related to receiving payments on an invoice. In other words, we're going to see the deposits happening in the accounting system within Wave with the bank feeds. And we want to tie those out to invoices that we had entered into the system prior to that deposit clearance. With the normal process being we're going to have an invoice and then we receive a payment in the future. When we have an invoice, it's going to be a non-cash type of transaction. Then we receive the payment which is going to come through with the bank feeds and we need to tie that out to the invoice that we have created get ready because we're dropping in with wave here we are on our get great guitars dashboard we're going to start off by opening up our reports those being the balance sheet the income statement or profit and loss p and l we'll start off with that old balance sheet report Selecting the balance sheet, then we're going to duplicate the tab, go into the tab up top to do so, right clicking on it and duplicating it. Going back to the tab to the left, then we're going to go back down to the reports on the bottom left, and now we're going to open up the profit and loss, the income statement. Same process here, once opened, we're going to go to the tab up top, right click on that tab, duplicate it. Then we're going to go back to the balance sheet. We're going to adjust the dates on the balance sheet. We got the drop down 2020. We want to bring this back to 2019 because that's where we put the data into the system. Then I'm going to go down to the bottom. We're going to be showing the details for it. We'll go back to the second tab. This is going to be the PNL tab. Drop down. We want to select 2019. Update that report. Go on down to the bottom of it. Once it's been updated, show the detail for it as well. Then we're going to go back to the first tab. I'm going to go down to our accounting information. We're going to be opening up our transactions. So we're looking at our transactions now, and I'm going to now filter the transactions. We're going to be using our filtering thing here, the filter. It is a filter. And then we're going to go to uncategorize, and I'm going to apply that filter. So then we only see the stuff we haven't done yet. And these are going to be the deposits now. So now we want to be looking at these deposits. Now, what we're going to consider now is the deposits. Usually, remember, if you're on, on, on just a, a cash basis system and you're just totally dependent on the bank feeds and you have a system where you're, you're getting paid possibly by, by like online transfers or something like that. If you're doing affiliate marketing, you're working, you're getting paid by Amazon, by YouTube, by AdSense. Uh, or something like that by courses that are just coming through then you could just record these straight to the um, income as you receive them and it's perfect however if you're in a system i'm jumping over to our flow chart this flow chart is in quickbooks but we're just looking at the flow chart this is a desktop version of quickbooks i'm just looking at the flow chart though so if if we're in a situation where we have to bill someone first invoice them uh, then we would have to send out an invoice. That's a non accrual type of thing that we would have to do. So if I have to send out the invoice for the bill, then the system is automatically going to make an increase in accounts receivable and an increase in sales at the time the invoice was created. And then we know that on the bank feed side of things, we're going to have over here on the bank feed side of things, the deposit that happens. And we need to tie those two things out in some, in some way, shape or form. So that's what we want to think about now. So there's a couple ways that we can think about doing this. Uh, and, and there's a little bit more kind of difficulty in this as well, because if you have the invoice, then typically you can have the receive payment. Now, if you only have a few invoices that you receive at a time, you, you might be able to like kind of deposit that in the checking account right away. And you'll be able to then match that up with the bank deposit and check that out. However, uh, it could be the case that you invoice somebody and then you invoice a lot of invoices. Let's say you have smaller products and you have a lot of invoices that you invoice at a lower price and you have a more volume based uh, business, then you might get a lot of receive payments. And then the question is, how are those payments going to be grouped when they go into the bank account? Because you need to be able to track them in the bank account in the same way that you see them because they're going to come into the bank feeds. Uh, in the format that they clear the bank account. So you got to check that out. The other thing that we can think about is the is the sales receipt. If you're thinking about like a business where you're in a, in a certain location, for example, and you're making a bunch of sales at the same point in time, uh, and then you're taking all that money, possibly cash, and going to the bank with it at the end of the day and depositing it, then it's going to show up on the bank statement on the deposit in the feeds in the format that it went into the bank. And we, we need to consider those kind of options. How would we think about it? So first, let's think about a situation where we have one invoice that we're trying to match out to a deposit. So I'm going to create an invoice in the wave system. I'm going to, I'm going to imagine the flow happen like this. However, we're obviously starting by looking at the bank feed. We're going to imagine that we enter the invoice first. And then now after that, we look at the bank feeds. It cleared the bank at a later point in time and we need to match the two out. 
when we create an invoice, it's going to be a non accrual thing, increasing accounts receivable and increasing sales. And then the deposit should be decreasing the receivable and going into the bank at that point. All right, so let's go back over. I'm going to duplicate this tab as well. So I have another kind of working tab, right clicking on this and I'm going to duplicate this tab. Then uh, let's go into to the one that we just basically opened up and let's create a mock invoice for it. So again, we're imagining we're going back in time and we're entering the invoice before we got the deposit here. <laughs> so we're going to say that uh, let's go back up to the dashboard to do it because this is probably the area that you would normally be entering invoices within being uh, the, the dashboard setting. Then I would go to the drop down, which is this like pretty large button, pretty good size button, create a new and then we want invoice. We're gonna make a new invoice. To add the invoice, I'm gonna add a new customer. So I'm gonna set up a customer for the invoice and I'm just gonna call it uh, customer one, uh, just for our purposes here. Now we could have the email address depending on how we're gonna do the billing process from it and so on and so forth. But the only thing we necessarily have to have is gonna be the name. So that's what I'm, where I will keep it for now. So there we have that. The invoice number is gonna populate automatically the invoice date, we want to bring this back uh, to 2019. So we're, we're in, uh, what are we working in April? So I want to bring this to like uh, April and let's put, put it on like the 1st of April, 2019, the due date. Uh, then I'll just keep that the same. looks like it's keeping it the same. I'll, I'll just keep it there for now. And then the item. Now I'm not going to add an item. You know, we could think about items later. These are these are fixed items that you could put in place that'll help you to populate the invoice a bit more automatically. So you can basically create items and then uh, you can put them in there a little bit faster. Here, I'm just going to put the description. This is going to be sale. I'm just going to say that's not the account. That's just the description. I'm going to put the price of one and the amount that we need is going to be that two zero four seven five zero. So it's going to be two zero four seven point five zero now if there's if there's sales tax or anything like this uh actually i should put that here two zero four seven point five zero and then this should be just one one there we go okay so that's going to be the amount now if you had sales tax on it then you could calculate the sales tax i won't do that now but we we, we saw how to how to make the sales tax and then when you invoice if the sales tax was included you'd bill it out and then of course you would receive a payment that would include the sales tax in it that would flow through to your bank feeds so i'm going to create this invoice so i'm going to save and continue on the invoice apparently the items field is required so i'm going to put sales on the items field as well and see if they allow me to continue this time and there we have it. And of course, when you send out the invoice, that's one of the areas where Wave is looking to, to collect or, or see if they can provide a service that would they can charge for in this case. And that would be sending out the invoices and seeing collection out. So it looks good. Before you send the invoice, here are three tips to help you get paid on time. Your customers having uh, different ways to pay and they're gonna possibly suggest using their, their payment methods. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, okay, and then it says your your invoices are automatically set up uh, to let customers pay online. Uh, you can change the payment methods you accept for uh, each invoice. So so if you allow them again to pay online, then you you could be subject to that um, uh, the, the charges that would allow you to do that. So you want to think about how you know what kind of payment method you're going to allow for the receivement of the payment. So then I approved the invoice and I mark it as sent. So I'm going to approve it in a market as sent for our example problems. Obviously you could send it in multiple ways. You could send it by email or you can print it out and, and send it if you would. So if you'd so like to in that format as well. So then I'm going to go back over to the first tab. And then if I go back to the first tab, our balance sheet and I update the report, then what's going to happen is accounts receivable now goes up. So accounts receivable went up by that 2047. 50 and the other side went on the income statement so if i go to the income statement and update the income statement the other side should be included in the sales item even though we haven't got any cash yet because this is this is the accrual kind of thing that's happening typically when you have the invoice we're recording sales or revenue when the invoice goes out and then we have the other side being the receivable we expect then at this point to receive something in the mail for it so there it is there's the 2047.50 uh, here. So then I'm going to close this back out. And now let's go back to our bank feeds. So if I go back up to the bank feeds, now we're imagining that we're going to uh, receive the payment. So what has happened here, we made the payment It's sometime in the future. 
in our bank feeds now we see a deposit going through and we need to match out the deposit to the um to, to the invoice we made so i'm going to select this item i'm, I'm going to click on it here and then i'm going to go down uh, to the categorize income i'm going to select the drop down and we want uh, payment received for an invoice that's what the one i want so this payment is received for an invoice and then if i select that there's our invoice there's the invoice that ties out there's the 2047.50 that was owed to us by somebody and here's the 2047.50 that was paid to us by somebody that being customer one is the name of our customer so so that matches out we're saying we just say okay so we match that one out and then I'm going to save that transaction. And so that matches it out. And then if I, so I'm going to check it off as being reviewed. And then if I go back up, then I'm going to say, all right, let's go back to our balance sheet, see what happens, what's going to happen. The receivable should go away because now that the amount is in uh, the checking account. So what I'm going to do is say update that. And notice the receivable goes back down. So we've removed the receivable. And the, the other side goes then to the checking account because that's going to be the deposit that has taken place. And you might say, well, the deposit was already in the checking account when we had the bank feed. Where did it come from? You, you remember all the deposits that's on the other side uh, went to sales and uncategorized income. So it basically took it out of uncategorized income and it reduced then uh, the accounts receivable line item. So note that works really well if you don't have a lot of deposits and you're and you're depositing like one invoice at a time and you wait till the invoice clears, you can match it up and you wait till the deposit clears, you can match it up to the invoice. But you can imagine situations where you have multiple invoices possibly, and then you deposited them into the bank at the same time. Let's say, you know, two people paid you like cash for an invoice. You took it to the bank and deposited it as one lump sum, waited for it to clear the bank then, it, and then you'd have, a, you'd have to basically match out those two invoices to the one deposit so we'll take a look at them at that in the next presentation if that is the case however then you may want to come up with some other method so that your deposits in in the system will will match up and you might use something like a clearing account to do that uh to like another cash account that you could put it into that cash account and then take it out of there and put it into your checking account in accordance with how you expect the deposits to be seen on uh the bank statement so that's going to be it for now. Uh, let's get out of here.